as we speak. Um, I'm, a, I'm a wild card, you know? Ten different people tell ten different personality traits. Uh, sometimes I'm laid back and chill. Sometimes I like to be the life of the party. Bet, bet. So tell us a little bit about your childhood growing up. Childhood. Whew. Um, so, uh, my parents were married when they had me. And uh, a couple years, my brother's three years younger than me. That's my only sibling. And uh, a couple years after he was born, we moved to the East. And I think about seven, eight years old, my parents got divorced. And uh, that was kind of, you know, important. I think uh, a lot of people don't talk about, you know, the separation of their parents at a young age and how it affects them. And a lot of people don't even realize how it did affect them until they got older to look back and understand a lot of it, you know. But uh, childhood was pretty good, pretty good. I, mean, I think uh, when I became a teenager, Katrina threw a, a loop in everybody's childhood. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, that, it was pretty nice. So, um, you know, you, you mentioned the, 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 the separation and with that being pretty much important and how a lot of people don't talk about it. Personally, how do you feel like that affected you from then and now that you reflect on it? Um, I think then... I was too young to really understand what was really going on. So I really didn't pay attention to the cons, but I only shed light on the pros, you know. For Christmas now, I'm gonna get two different gifts from both parents instead of just one group gift, you know. So I think being young and experiencing that, it, uh, it affects you but you don't really realize till you become adult, like I said. And when I became an adult, I think uh, it kind of made me resent my dad a lot, you know, and I never really ever talk about that, you know. Um, and getting his side of the story also as well kind of, you know, make me wish I would have uh, been more open to him younger. It, it, we had like a real gap in our relationship. Um, until I started back playing sports, so kind of, you know, was the glue. Mm -hmm. Us men always know how to bond through sports, you know, so that's just, you know, the way it was with us. Actually, about to go watch the game at my uncle's house. <laughs> All right, so what, uh, what high school did you go to? Uh, I went to a lot of high schools. Uh, a lot of people know I went to uh, McMain. Um, I went to West Jeff, I went to uh, Warren Easton, that's where I graduated from. I went to Madden Science, uh, when Katrina hit, I went to school in Tomball, Texas, right outside of Houston. So yeah, I went to a few schools. <laughs> and so that, that, all that movement, you think, you know, how, how was that experience by being able to go to all these different schools? I think, uh, it, it built a lot of relationships. I know a lot of people in New Orleans, and I think it started with me going to a lot of different schools, meeting a lot of people, building a lot of relationships, um, playing sports. You meet people playing sports through school, but uh, high school, it was, it, was, it was hard to stay focused when you're in school for three, four months, then you ship to another school for another six months. And then you do a year and a half at this school and then a year and a half at that school. But, you know, it was interesting. All right. So after high school, um, of course, you became, you know, eventually became a fireman. So what motivated you to make, make that choice and do that? Well, uh, what motivated me, well, I got to tell you a little bit prior, when right. I graduated. Oh, yeah, talk about after high 
school. I got you. I got you. I got you. When uh when I graduated from Easton, uh I went to college in Baton Rouge at Southern University, and uh I was heavy in the sports and contemplating playing sports, but they told me I was too short to play receiver, and I like scoring touchdowns. I didn't want to play defense, but uh so I stopped focusing on sports and went into the engineering field, and uh I was in school for mechanical engineering, but uh. Southern was like a, a high school 2.0, if I like to tell people. It was a real big party college. And if something wasn't going on at Southern, you were still in Baton Rouge. And LSU was also a big party college. So you found yourself being distracted easily if you was into distractions, you know. So I was that was me as a teenager. And uh, when I left Southern, I moved back to uh, New Orleans. And I was working at the nightclub, Eiffel. And my pops kind of was the one who actually influenced me into becoming a firefighter because he was like, you know, you got a bunch of different jobs, but you need something more secure where you can have benefits and, you know, something that would be in place for, you know, down the line. And uh, I dived right in when he said it and uh, joined the fire department. You know, I didn't have any uncles or dads or grandpas who were prior firemen like a lot of the people that I became co-workers with uh, was actually going through the academy with, but, you know, I just dove in her head first, never had an interest for it at, as a child or nothing, just, you know, another way for me to provide for myself and have benefits and be able to sustain myself in this world, you know, so that kind of what led me to be a firefighter, and uh, you grow to love it, you know, you, you walk up on somebody and they're not breathing and you do CPR or whatever medical things you gotta do to make them come back to life, there's nothing, you know, you can't fight that warm feeling of, you know, helping somebody have another day, you know, have have a family member for another day. You know, we've gotten letters and food, all type of gifts just from doing our job. And you know, that's what we strive to do our job the best. You know, and uh, that's kind of why I got to the fire department. All right, so we know that, you know, you basically out of that started something else. So uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, your brand that you have and that you're even wearing now and how that even came about. So um, I was working at the fire department. Um, for four years, I resigned this past August. But before I resigned, COVID hit while I was working for the fire department. And I was just looking for another way to, you know, make money, <laughs> you know? So uh, I was like, let me try these t-shirts, this clothing line. And I was, you know, I had cold feet at first, but I was like, you know, you gotta put for effort if you want to get something done. And I dove in and just started selling shirts, sitting outside the firehouse. And people would just support just because I was outside the firehouse, a fireman trying to make a, another hustle, you know, while on the clock. And uh, it invested in and evolved into something beautiful, you know. Um, I done did a lot more than firefighter shirts, and that's kind of where it started at. And now uh, that I left, I kind of ventured off into another clothing brand, uh, Get Rich or Die Broke. Um, that's where we headed with uh, pushing the new brand as well. You know, So that's new stuff coming forward. So what keeps you inspired and motivated to, to do this? Um, I know, you know for anybody, money is an is a essential necessity. Um, and it's definitely a driver, a driving factor. But what else can you think about or that you know already offhand that motivates you to continue to do this and inspires you with the new things that you're putting out? Um, unfortunately, uh, I don't have any kids yet, but my only sibling just had his first daughter and she's so precious. And just her motivates me every day to be better. You know, I want to be a better uncle, so I got to be a better Nick first, you know, before I can even be a better uncle. And uh, I think family, friends, a lot of stuff just motivates me 
to want to be the best I could be. I think that's the best way I could put it, you know. Nah, that's, that's cool. So, you know, we're going to switch it a little bit here. So what do you think uh, – what, what do you think New Orleans, what makes New Orleans feel like New Orleans? What does that, what is your definition of that? I think when I try to describe it to uh, people from out of town, I'm like, you know, I kind of take in the nickname we got, the Big Easy. I think we are, you know, we have our own way of doing things. You know, it's, even the way we talk is it's, it's relaxed, it's slurred, you know, it's, it's is, is laid back, it's chill, you know. It, we want to enjoy a nice vibe, scenery, whether it's by yourself or a group of people. I think uh, New Orleans is a special place and unique. Like everybody feel about their own home, mostly, you know. But uh, I just feel like it's just the culture you can't get anywhere else, you know. It's just you can't even fight it. The love. It, People tell me uh, from out of town all the time, people don't even speak when they walk past. And, you know, we genuinely just say hello. You know, how you doing? Right. Hoping you having a great day. You know, but uh, I think New, York, New Orleans is just one of a kind. So what happens, you know, that you could think about as one of a kind city that has happened to you that could pretty much only happen in New Orleans? I think it's real unique that... Uh, Six months out the academy, it was this uh, lady who dad had just passed, and she was trying to jump off the interstate and commit suicide. And it was a uh, we got dispatched out, and I could kind of tell she couldn't really relate to anybody else because we were the only two of color, mm -hmm. you know. So I kind of felt an obligation to try to beat up for uh, and. A long story short, when she had turned her head for a while, I kind of ran over there and grabbed her. And I felt it was unique because um, somebody was on the ground recording, you know, whether the person fell or may not, they would have had the footage. And because of New Orleans being so small, when they posted it to their social media, somebody that I know saw it and noticed that was me and ask them to send them the video. So that's how I was able to get the footage mm -hmm. to show people of me going and grabbing a lady from the side of the bridge and saving her and making sure she didn't. Cause she tried to get back up. She tried to scream and fight. And I told her, you know, it's gonna be all right. You know, you got people out there mm -hmm. that's looking towards you that need you. It's children, nieces and nephews that are gonna think this is gonna be okay to do. And you can't deliver that message. Right. You know, I know you heard, I know your dad's going, not coming back, but you got to be there for them because your dad is gone. And I thought it was unique, you know, that I was able to get the video footage just because somebody posted a, their video to social media and somebody noticed me just because I feel like how small and unique this city is. Right. No, nah, that's, that's definitely dope. Um, and last thing, like, what would you tell your younger self, you know, with all the experience that you have now or even, you know, children? as well, or just something that's inspirational to you that could help you keep going along? Um, what would I tell my younger self? Uh, I think, don't be scared. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of people have an idea and the fear of being unsuccessful is holding them back. And if they just, put their idea on paper, put in the motions to get started, they would see how easy it would become realistic and a wonderful thing, you know? So never give up and don't procrastinate, but uh, don't be scared, don't be scared. You cool. just gotta do it. Well, tell everybody where to find you at, find your brand to, you know, support you. Only in New Orleans. You know that. You know that. Only in New Orleans. Y'all got to stop by, pull up. They got a lot of people merch here. So it's not just my merch. You can come and find a lot of people in New Orleans stuff in here. You know, and it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger and better. And that's what we all about. You know what I'm saying? Bigger, better brands. Bringing everybody together. Support. Family. Vibes. You know. Right, Only in New Orleans. Social, social, social.
Oh, uh, my social media, Nola Heroes. You can pull up on, on Instagram, find me on Nola Heroes, and I got the merch for you. You know, slide in the DMs. We got the merch for you. Only in New Orleans.